Well, let's refocus our attention here again on Florida and specifically Horseshoe Beach, one of the areas that's been impacted arguably among the most out of some of these cities that have been hit so far by that Category 3 storm that swept through Florida. And joining us live right now here is Brooke Hires, who's a council member with Horseshoe Beach. Brooke, thanks so much for joining us here. We can see obviously that you are outside. You've been out surveying this damage throughout the week. Tell us a little bit more about what you've been seeing. Um, what I've seen is uh, catastrophic damage. I've seen uh, homes that have been here for uh, many, many years uh, destroyed, uh, disintegrated. No, no recollection or trace of where they went. Uh, uh, there is, there is, there's debris everywhere. Um, uh, I, it's just so hard to explain. Everything on the ground, roofs. Uh, appliances, pylons, contents of homes. Uh, if your house was on stilts here, it was either, if it wasn't taken away, if you had a second level on the bottom, everything was washed out to the Gulf. Everything is gone or in our town stacked up in debris piles uh, that still need to be cleaned up. Brooke, that's just devastating. I'm not sure how much you've been able to see other areas, but if you could shed some light to our viewers here of how Horseshoe Beach compares to some of the other nearby towns. Um, what we're hearing is a little uh, south of us, Cedar Key, they received some damage. Uh, what I'm hearing from friends is that uh, they're getting it cleaned up pretty quick over there. Uh, I I'm pretty sure Steenhatchee was hit pretty hard. It's near the eye of, well, it come on at Keaton Beach. Um, I have heard from a uh, from people that have been in other the other couple of coastal towns that Horseshoe Beach is, is probably the worst they've seen. Yeah, it's really devastating, Brooke. And I'm going to put up some video here for viewers to get a, a better look. We had our Skyfox drone flying over some of the damage throughout the area. And it's really just devastating to see. Uh, of course, we've been following just the very latest here with all of the people who have been impacted through this. Now tell us a little bit more about your experience in Horseshoe Beach. Have you lived there for a long time or have you ever seen destruction like this? Never seen destruction like this in Horseshoe Beach. Well, we were told that the last hurricane that was this large was in 1935. We experienced Hermine in 16 and of course the storm of the century in 93. Those were the two worst storms we had seen here other than Adalia. For residents who have lost their homes, Brooke, what comes next for them? Well, we have primary residence people here that are going to have to apply for FEMA um, and secondary residences. I'm not that familiar with FEMA right now, but uh, they 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 can apply at FEMA.gov. There's people on the ground assessing from FEMA right now and, uh, here to help people that may not have uh, internet or uh, you know access to technology. Um, and Brooke, if, I know that you've been out and about. If you could hear for us, would you mind turning your camera around and kind of giving us another angle here of some of this destruction that you've been seeing? Sure. I want to show you all this house or the house that you, was here. Do you see those pilings right there? That's the Gulf of Mexico you're looking at. There was a home standing on these pilings. Wow. My friend Scotty's wow. family lives there. I watched him take the boards off the dock the day before the storm to save his dog and he lost his family, lost their whole entire home. So what have these days looked like for you, Brooke, as you've been out and about talking with residents? This is a small town too. I mean, how many residents are there in Horseshoe Beach? We have about 40, I'm oh, sorry, 480 water accounts here. Of those, I'd say 120 or so are, 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 are first time residents, full time residents. And what about the community itself? How do they respond in a time of crisis like this and come together? Uh, we're a small town. We're a tight knit town. We're the last frontier. You know, we're old Florida. People here love each other and and they've showed up to help. People are showing up. Yeah, Brooke, I see you getting emotional, understandably so, and, and you can tell how much you care, how much so many other people care, especially during uh, this very difficult period. Is there anything else that you would like to tell us uh, just about the destruction, about the community, or about what comes next from here? I'd like to introduce you to the people that own the property that I'm showing you behind us. You can ask them about, you know, what they're feeling, their emotions. 
Yeah, no, that this is Mr. Sid Thomas. This was his place behind us. Mr. Sid, y'all want to talk? And Miss Shelley, if y'all want to hey, yeah, let hi, them know. Hi, uh, Sid and how, Shelley. Thanks for, thanks for joining us here. Uh, so uh, sorry to hear about your uh, home. Yeah, we've owned this place. Uh, 68 years since 1956. So it's part of the family. Raised our kids here, summer vacations. I'm so sorry. I, I can't imagine how difficult that is to, to be going through this. And I know so many great memories there. And I know this is very difficult. So again, thank you for, for joining us here to tell us a little bit more about this place that you love so much. If you don't mind, if we go back to when you were hearing about these warnings, hearing about Idalia and the damage that it could possibly cost during this, what was your first reaction? Did you evacuate or how did you go about handling those warnings? Well, this is a, a second home and, uh, you know, we come down here some during the week and, and on the weekends, my son came down here and took a lot of the docks up and, uh, thinking that it would save, uh, you know, at least the docks. Uh, but this one just had too much surge. It probably was 10 or 12 feet and it just went right, you know, right into the house and took it away. Really. We survived the 93 storm of the century. We were the only house on the beach, nine houses went on both sides of us in a marina and we survived it. So we really ho thought that, well, but we could see and understand from the news that, you know, maybe we'd be fortunate enough to ride out another one, but wasn't meant to be. Yeah, and again, I'm, so, I'm so sorry to, to hear that. Uh, this, this week, what has this been like for you guys? And as I talked with Brooke, I've heard about this community that is small, but so strong that bands together. How has, has the days after this been for you? Lots of hugs, lots of help. The people All showing up, lots of friends, and, uh, helping people, and helping everybody, and it's been great. Of course, yeah. you needs help. We're strong, and we love each other, and we see each other on weekends, weeks. We're down here off and on, roughly about six months total a year, and uh, you might not see somebody for a while, and then when you do, it's just like you see them every day. And we've known people that have been here since the '30s. My family started coming down here turn of the century. They'd come down here on a wagon. My granddad owned a grocery store in High Springs, so he'd come down and get fish. And well, one of our cousins lost his back. house. And yeah, I mean, we go way back, way yeah. back. It looks like a beautiful community, obviously, that's gone through so much, especially this past week. And Brooke, maybe this is more of a question for you, but whoever is able to answer this, how can people help during this time? Right now, we're asking for uh, we're asking for dump trailers. We're asking for tractors, skid steers, so we can push up some of this debris and get it out of here, so people can start, you know, assessing their real damage, what kind of damage is done to their home, what they need to secure it structurally. But first and foremost, we got to get the debris out of here. And right now, we need skid steers. We need grapples to pick it up and put it into dump trailers. We need to put it at the um, the county roll-off site, the dump site. We need to push it to the sides of the curb. Those are the kind of things we need right now. Okay, and if, if someone is interested in trying to provide some of that assistance, what's the best way for them to get in contact? Um, I would say uh, contact. Right now, I am the designated communication person for the town council. You can call me. Um, I can give you my information, and we'll put people in the right direction. Right now, we have experienced people coming down, offering help, uh, obviously looking for jobs to help and things like that. Right now, this community is not in any um, position to pay people to help clean up right now. We're depending on our family, our neighbors, with dump trucks, with tractors, with things like that, so that we can, you know, soften, soften the financial burden people may have with everything else. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brooke, and thank you so much to the residents that you brought on as well for talking with us here. I know a very difficult time, but being able to hear stories like your own is really what helps us understand exactly what happened and what comes next from here. But I do know just from talking with you how strong your community is, and uh, we're thinking of you during this time. Thank you so much for covering our story. We appreciate it. Horseshoe Beach needs help. Thank you so much.